Hi, I'm Eve Cremades. I work for CONICET and at Universidad Tecnológica Nacional in Mendoza. Before beginning, I would like to thank the organizing committees of this meeting, and in particular for having asked me to present this talk. I will speak about the evolution of various aspects of coronal mass ejections in the inner heliosphere. Okay, so this is a very brief overview of the presentation. Uh, first, I will make a short introduction, then I will address the three most prominent aspects of CMEs whose evolution we are mostly interested in. CME size and propagation direction, kinematic profile, and magnetic configuration. And then I will close with a summary and some final remarks. Okay, so although CMEs were formally discovered as coronal transients with the advent of the space age in the early 70s, uh, that was when the first coronagraphs were put in space. Here are some nice images by some of these coronagraphs. Um, we believe that the first registered hints of their existence may date back to 1860, when several observers simultaneously drew these sketches uh, during a very popular total solar eclipse across Europe. And now we believe that uh, this is a, a clear hint of a coronal mass ejection that was taking place during that total solar eclipse. And the eclipse that happened last year in December in Argentina just reminded me of these sketches because we saw this very nice CME in course during the total solar eclipse. Okay, but well before their formal discovery, their existence had been suggested already to explain geomagnetic disturbances as shown here by this series of cartoons uh, compiled by Len Burlaga. And it wasn't until the 80s when CMEs were officially linked to interplanetary structures that were detected in situ by spacecraft with very clear signatures, such as shown here in this example. Okay. Uh, but soon after these historical events, the first models were proposed to explain the origins of CMEs, the related phenomena, magnetic configuration, propagation throughout the inner heliosphere, and effects at Earth and in geospace. There is also a genuine scientific motivation to understand the physics involved in determining how their magnetic properties evolve uh, from eruption to arrival at 1AU, and of course, uh, from the practical point of view, uh, there are several models and techniques that are being developed uh, to improve the current abilities of space weather forecasting. So far, we don't know where and when will the next CME erupt. So the best we can do is to improve our understanding and attempt forecasting uh, once a CME has occurred. Um, and on the basis of early observables, such as this one, and the related phenomena, such as solar energetic particles, uh, radio bursts, etc. Okay, so we are mostly interested in knowing how these uh, three main aspects of CMEs evolve throughout the inner heliosphere. First of all, size and location. Uh, this will directly address the question of whether a particular CME will impact Earth or other object in space. Um, propagation kinematic profile. This is aimed at answering when will that happen. And magnetic configuration. This uh, will answer how will they be magnetically organized when they impact Earth or other object. And to know these three aspects, and in particular how they evolve throughout the inner heliosphere, is crucial uh, for space weather forecasting. 
So regarding size and propagation direction, uh, those are probably the most basic macroscopic properties we want to know and understand. As we will see in a while, there are several models that are capable of evolving CMEs and that can roughly reproduce the main parameters of interplanetary CMEs that are detected in situ. Uh, so we are, we believe we are on the right path. Um, there are also an, a number of studies of the radial flux rope size within magnetic clouds, which are a particular type of interplanetary CMEs as a function of heliospheric dis heliocentric distance, uh, such as this one from Gulisano et al, 2012, where we can see how uh, the diameter of the flux rope evolves uh, in the um, inner heliosphere. Um, also on the basis of, of observations and modeling, Jambier et al. and the Moulin et al. Uh, found that the average maximum angular extent is apparently about 60 degrees. Uh, however, we should keep in mind that uh, the dimensions of CMEs might be quite different in the direction of their main axis and perpendicular to it. And it's also worth noticing that um, the shape that is used as input for uh, several MHD models is determinant uh, for space weather forecasting purposes. And this has been emphasized recently by Scolini et al. 2018. So various approaches have been proposed to assess propagation direction and size. There are some techniques that can be applied on the basis of single viewpoint observations, like those from SOHO, that is from the perspective from Earth. This is the case, for instance, of cone models, like this one from Michalek et al., um, this one from Zhao et al., from Cremades et al., 2018, oops, sorry. Other methods to assess uh, propagation direction are um, those based on a fictitious, fictitious force, like those proposed by uh, Cremades et al. and Gopal Swami et al. Um, or the forecast model, which is kind of similar, but uh, with a higher degree of difficulty, complication. Uh, now, methods based on polarized images can also be applied to single viewpoint observations as done uh, several years ago by Moran and Davila, 2004. Here we can see for the same CME how um, the shape, uh, the structure is very different seen from one side and from the other. Uh, However, having uh, multiple, multiple, um, sorry, polarized images from multiple viewpoints can be useful uh, to further constrain the problem of CME reconstruction, as um, done here in some papers by Mirla et al. 2009 and Moran et al. and the Koning and Pizzo. Now, with extra viewpoints, such as those provided by the stereo spacecraft, here an example, uh, other methods to estimate propagation direction and size were developed, like the tie point reconstruction and triangulation technique. Here are some sketches and results from Temer et al., from Srivastava et al., Liver et al., Liu et al., so these are all uh, methods that enable us to see how the location of the CMEs and uh, particular features and parcels within CMEs evolve as they travel through the inner heliosphere. 
straightforward modeling is also another means of determining the size and propagation direction of CMEs. These methods rely on fitting an assumed 3D envelope or geometrical figure uh, until the visual agreement is achieved. They can be applied to single viewpoint observations, but more views are also helpful to constrain the solution, since otherwise we have many free parameters. The models by Tarnisian et al., such as in this example, and Good et al., 2010, um, are based on this approach of forward modeling. And this here is an example of the GCS model applied to a CME that is believed to be seen face on and edge on. Uh, we can see how the, this model captures pretty well the overall three-dimensional shape, uh, suggesting that this ad hoc geometrical figure that we use for the fitting is a pretty good approximation of the three-dimensional shape of CMEs. Okay, so unfortunately, there are several issues affecting the accuracy of these parameters, which are crucial when used as inputs uh, for other models of CME evolution. The most important are uh, deflections with respect to the source region coordinates. Um, there are some reports of non-self-similar expansion and non-cylindrically symmetric, such as those from Lugas et al. and Davies et al. Um, the um, solar wind, which is uh, in the environment in which CMEs travel is homogeneous and very complex. And we are still not able to, to capture its complexity in models. Uh, the fact that vantage points on the same plane are on the same plane uh, are not helpful to constrain fittings of CMEs that are also traveling on the ecliptic plane. So this problem is addressed in Cabello et al. Uh, 2016 and Cremades et al. 2020. Um, even with improved instrumentation, it is also difficult <clears throat> to discern white light features in the heliosphere. And, <clears throat> sorry, uh, the size and shape at 1AU of CMEs cannot be directly assessed um, from measurements since in situ detections are very limited. So we, we can capture those only at specific uh, places in the heliosphere. Okay, now provided that a CME has a propagation component towards the earth, so we know that um, it has a chance of being geoeffective. Now we would like to know uh, which is its speed profile and uh, time of arrival. And this will help us to answer the question when this CME will arrive. Most of the forecasting models naturally focus on this aspect. Uh, it's impossible to mention all of them here. So I will try to mention at least the most prominent examples uh, in the next slides and the most recent ones. These are some examples of uh, distance time measurement in the inner heliosphere using uh, points from coronagraphs and from the heliospheric imagers on board stereo. And this other paper combines uh, measurements from PSP, uh, Whisper, which is its uh, heliospheric imager on board PSP, the Parker Solar Pro, and Stereo High One, as you can see in these images. 
we can uh, broadly classify these propagation models into empirical and data assimilative models, physics-based models, uh, which typically describe um, the evolution and time of arrival of the shocks that are driven ahead of CMEs and not the CMEs themselves. And the third classification is MHD models, which are pretty good at capturing the state of the background solar wind in a simplified map. Uh, so we will start here with examples of empirical and data um, assimilative models. Um, these include uh, <clears throat> those that determine time from simple equations that are constrained by solar observables, like the um, ISA model, which is the most popular one by Gopal Swami and collaborators. Uh, and there are also several variations of this model. Um, those based on interplanetary simulation data, like the ones from Jackson et al. and Manoharan et al. Uh, those based on tomography, uh, uh, in particular applied with applied on SME data. These are also works by Jackson and collaborators based on the heliospheric imagers, uh, like those from Chile, Ruyard, uh, Davis, Colanino et al., uh, Mostel et al., Rollet et al., and Good et al. Here are some of, of these examples. And <clears throat> those based on the expansion speed concept, like this one proposed here by Dal Lago et al. and Sven et al. As for physics-based models, these include shock and drag-based models. Among the first ones, we can find the very well-known shock time of arrival, the interplanetary shock propagation model, and the Hakamada Akasofu Fry version 2 model. Um, there are also reports of improvements uh, to the first one, shock time of arrival, on the basis of SCPs and X-rays. Uh, then we also have various versions of the um, SPM model uh, by Feng and Sao, one, two, and three. Uh, and drug-based models, oh, sorry, uh, those based on uh, lower frequency type two emissions, like those from Cremades et al. and Corona Romero et al. Here we can see how these drifting emissions can tell us uh, how the CME shock evolves in the inner heliosphere as the shock enters into more rarefied uh, regions. And drug-based models, like those from uh, Bursnak. Okay, these were initially proposed by, by Bursnak and collaborators and uh, other versions that followed, uh, like those from Hes and Tsang, Sahteva, Xi et al, Dumbovic et al, and Napoletano et al. As for MHD models, we can mention the WSA and Lille plus cone model, which is uh, commonly the, the one mostly run by, by SWIPSI, the Space Weather Prediction Center in the US. Uh, this is an example of its implementation. Uh, Corhel by Linker and collaborators as, at Predictive Science. The Space Weather Modeling Framework included including various coupled components and several of them are based on the Batsaras code. Euphoria by Pomoel and Putz to which uh, Ferbeke et al added a magnetized CME to replace the cone model typically used by Enlil. And the H3D MHD 
by Wu et al. Here is an example of that one. Uh, here euphoria uh, components from the spaceware modeling framework and the CCMHD model by Feng et al. and Su et al., which here illustrates also the evolution in the heliosphere of a magnetized CME. <clears throat> okay, now here we can list the main problems we face at the time of addressing evolution of propagation. Uh, these are the incapability to accurately track the evolution of the CME front or of the shock sheath uh, throughout the inner heliosphere. This is also uh, due by the quality of heliospheric images. Uh, the fact that magnetic flux ropes should be treated, uh, treated as fully three-dimensional structures with dimensions that may behave differently in all three directions, as noted by Cremades et al, 2020. So here we can see for the same CME, how sizes can be pretty different depending on the axis. Um, we have also a limited understanding of the underlying physics which is crucial for model implementation. Again, the inhomogeneous and complex, complex nature of the solar wind, lack of knowledge on the processes that take place when events and structures interact. So here we have a, an example of uh, interacting CM, CMEs or CMEs interacting with other structures. Also here we have um, this example in Dasso et al, 2009. Um, and we have uncertainties in input parameters for models. And the fact that models are not comprehensive enough to address, to address both the complexity of uh, parameters and the microphysics of the system. Uh, for instance, to include turbulence and waves. Okay, now one of the most elusive problems is to determine the internal, internal magnetic field of CMEs. And not only for space weather purposes, but also to understand the physics of CME evolution and initiation. In principle, structures uh, seen in coronal and heliospheric white light images should be indicative of the magnetic field structure, but in practice this is not straight, straightforward and um, there are different approaches to address this problem. Uh, there are reports of magnetic field measurements um, from remote sensing detections using radio techniques, but this uh, focus on a handful of case, case studies, very limited. Also, there are reports of large scale rotation of the um, magnetic flux rope during its evolution, as in Lynch et al, 2010. And on the other hand, uh, self-similarity observed in ICMEs is a good thing that helps, although there are recent studies that are questioning this, at least for some case studies. And finally, spacecraft in the inner heliosphere are key to assess magnetic configuration at shorter distances than 1AU. Examples of this uh, spacecraft are Messenger, Venus Express, Parker Solar Probe, as shown in an analyzed example by Nieves Chinchilla et al and now Solar Orbiter. As for models and techniques addressing magnetic field configuration within CMEs, uh, not all of them strictly address evolution, but rather predict 
the configuration of these magnetic fields uh, at one AU or other object in space. Uh, most of them are specifically aimed at assessing the BSERT, which is the component of the magnetic field that is capable of interacting with the Earth's magnetosphere. Here I begin with the empirical models. Uh, this relates some observed geometry of the um, overall helical structure of the magnetic flux rope, supposedly embedded within the CME. Um, Chen et al. used the Bayes Bayesian approach um, in combination with in situ magnetic fields. Uh, in real time and a magnetic flux rope model. Uh, Yurchi Shin et al. noted that the orientations of elongated halo CMEs, as in this image, somewhat agreed with uh, those of the um, associated magnetic clouds detected in situ. Then Patsurakos et al., uh, 2016, um, used magnetic helicity conservation plus um, forward modeling reconstructions and analytical expressions also to predict uh, what the um, magnetic field at 1AU uh, was supposed to, to be in measured in situ and the approach of Sabani et al. Uh, is based on the magnetic flux rope from the source region, as here in this uh, image, in combination with um, GCS reconstruction and propagation models. As for semi-empirical models, we have the Helio XM by Kunkel and Chen, the Fried model, by Isaac Nin, um, Fido by K et al, uh, also Fido Sit by K and Nieves Chinchilla, Fred by Gopal Swami and collaborators, 3D Core here um, by Mustel et al, Infros by Sarkar et al, and and theater parade proposed recently by Kay and Nieves Chinchilla. Okay, regarding MHD models addressing evolution of magnetic field configuration uh, within CMEs, we can mention the Coin TVD 3D model by Shen et al., the Susanu model by Shiotan Kataoka, which uses data constraints, um, background solar wind, and the spheromag flux rope. Gene et al., which combines um, here uh, the awesome model with a CME generated by the Eagle uh, code. The, um, recent addition of a magnetized flux rope, or not wrong here, uh, by Tuan Lil, by Ottersil et al. And the addition of a magnetized flux rope to Euphoria. Okay, not, not wrong here. Um, okay, among the main problems we face to assess evolution of magnetic field configuration, we have difficulties or even impossibility to remote sense both the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field, even harder to determine its evolution. We have uncertainties in other parameters that we need to constrain simulations. Uh, models and simulations are of course, not comprehensive enough. Uh, we are not able to um, keep track of rotations and distortions like pancaking here, for instance, in this model by Riley et al. And other processes that also affect evolution are erosion and those taking place when other magnetic structures interact. 
Okay, to summarize, we can say that in the past decades, diversity and progress of heliophysics dedicated missions plus ground-based observatories have enabled enormous progress and increasing complexity of techniques and models aimed at characterizing the, very, the evolution of various aspects of CMEs. Um, we have um, models and techniques with various pros and cons. Um, the maximum benefit would be achieved when we use different methods under different circumstances. Uh, anyway, even more complexity is needed, particularly to address the internal magnetic field configuration of CMEs. He, this is a summary of the factors that hinder accurate determination of the evolution of size and location, kinematics, and magnetic field configuration. And missions offset from the Sun Earth line um, will enable better constraints of the main parameters of flux ropes, proper vantage points such as those from stereo are helpful, but solar orbiter will be crucial for events that are propagating on the ecliptic plane because solar orbiter will um, view those from a higher from higher latitudes. Uh, it is established that we need missions that are offset from the Sun Earth line, for instance, at uh, L5. And coronagraphs are, of course, a must. Heliospheric imaging with better sensitivity is needed. Um, in situ detectors at many other locations than 1AU will be also very welcome. And OK, that's all. Thank you for your attention. And please read my acknowledgments here.